Hi, I'm Casey Lackey for Innovative Shipworks, and today I'm gonna to show you guys how to cover the dreaded double barrel. Everyone is really intimidated by this shape because it's so tall and skinny, but I'm gonna show you there's a really easy way to cover it without any wrinkles. So I've got my cake here, and I've got my fondant. I've rolled it slightly thicker than I normally would. So over an eighth of an inch is what you wanna start because you wanna have plenty of skirt and plenty of fondant to stretch your way around and pull out all the wrinkles that might happen. So once again, I have mine over my dowel to roll out easily. Be sure you can at least touch the table with your fondant. And then take it over the top, down the bottom. Step one, don't panic and instantly try to start smoothing down the sides. Just like when you're covering a normal tier, you really wanna make sure it's adhered and all the air bubbles are pushed out from the top before you start working on the side. So I've actually got a big air bubble, so I'll actually just lift, get it nice and polished down. Just get that very top inch really well adhered. Once you've got that, your chances of it ripping or tearing along the top edge are significantly decreased and it probably won't happen at all. Now your thing to worry about are wrinkles. And a lot of this depends on the type of fondant you use as to like how you develop your skills. I am using the Karma fondant for this, so I would like it because I, I feel like I have lots of time to do what I want. But it works for any type of fondant. And so just like we did with our normal tier, you want to keep most of your skirt in your left hand and smoothing with your right. And don't go all the way down. You're going halfway down to start. And so you see, every time I kind of get to where there might be a wrinkle, I just kind of fluff it. And you're just kind of working your way around, getting that top half attached all the way around to make sure it's smooth. Now you're gonna go in for your bottom. The bottom is where most of the wrinkles will happen. And so it's always remembering to fluff before you, if you see a wrinkle starting or you feel it starting to form, just fluff it out before you kind of crease it in. So once again, all the way to the bottom. That is where a wrinkle would form. So you can see that like, oh God, what are we gonna do? Fluff, fluff, pull it out, and then just take it right back in. Because as you go down, you're actually stretching the fondant to get it to go smooth kind of like trying to iron something with your hand. And so you see, no wrinkles. Look, mom, no wrinkles. And I'm gonna try and pull my biggest set of wrinkles to the front so you guys can see. Because as you come to the very back, where all the fondant kind of finishes up, that's where you tend to get more wrinkles. Meep. I'm gonna try and pull these guys to the front for you so you can see what you do. So you can kind of see right in this area is where I've got my biggest set of a large wrinkle. And it's just the same thing. So don't be afraid to pull out where you've already gotten it smooth. And pull out again and keep pulling out. Oops. Just like such, all the way around, and lo and behold, you have a perfectly covered, no wrinkles, double barrel. From here, the process is exactly the same as you would do for a normal tier. I wanna go in with my fondant smoothers first. Really adhere my fondant all the way around, starting to look out for air bubbles. And there's one. Air bubbles happen to everyone. Everybody's always like, Casey, I have air bubbles, what do I do? I'm like, pop them. Air bubbles are a part of fondant, just let it go. All right, and so then, once again, going in with your thin, Sugar smoother. Oops. Need a little bit. It's got cornstarch on the surface just to make sure it glides easily. If it's still not gliding, there's a fun trick of putting a little bit of Crisco on your hand so that your hand is actually stuck to the smoother and it gives you a little bit of play of being able to move it. I 
but always go gradually. A lot of people try to go and chop it like this. That's not what you wanna do. You wanna actually smooth back and forth because if you try to cut it too quickly, the fondant will kind of recess and you will not have that beautiful clean edge that you're going for. I always seem to do better with my left hand than my right. And you will find as you do this, like you're better with one hand than the other. I'm always better at cutting with my left hand than my right. I tend to grip a lot harder with my right hand. And it just doesn't, it doesn't slide as easily. I can do it, I just don't like it. All right. So then once again, pull your front end away. Beautiful bottom edge. Anything pops out, you can always go back in and re-smooth it. And going back in with your thicker ones to pull up your top edge. So there you go, just kind of keep smoothing and polishing, pulling out that edge, popping any air bubbles that come out, and that is covering the dreaded double barrel cake. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial and you learned something, and we'll see you next time.